welcome to this episode of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And I've been waiting nine months to uh, get to talk to this artist again. Uh, I got a very special person here. Uh, she has now reached Billboard's Top 40 with one of her latest songs, Princess, and over 1.5 million views of the video, which was also featured on CMT. Please welcome Dallas Remington. Dallas, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for coming on. Like I said, it's been uh, nine months since we, we last talked, and I know there's been a lot going on since then. I mean, you're just kind of blowing up. Let's face it, you're 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 ready for stardom, I think. I hope so. We're trying to, you know, we're doing everything we can. So hopefully, you know, we'll get there soon. <laughs> well, I don't doubt that you will. And uh, so where are you calling in from tonight? I'm here in Nashville. Um, I'm actually gigging tonight in Nashville. So when we get done, I'll go play a set. And my dog is whining in the background. So I apologize for that. She's just oh. she wants to be heard too. <laughs> oh, no problem. She's welcome on my podcast anytime as well. And I, I hear she just turned five. Yes, she just turned five. She's uh, She's getting more stubborn. The older she gets, and um, I guess she's just like me, but she's a <laughs> she's a big old long-haired German Shepherd, and I spent all day today uh, swiffering up her fur. I think I went through about ten swiffers, and I swiffer mm -hmm. every day. So you know that's just the life of a long-haired German Shepherd. <laughs> yeah, and I've had some dogs that have shed in the past, and right now we're just down to one chocolate lab. And oh. fortunately, he does not shed at all because I get tired of sweeping up after them. Neither of my lab shed. And I'm like, why can't you be like them? <laughs> <laughs> so how many dogs in total do you have then? We have three right now. Um, but it seems like we're always getting more every time I go home. Because Phoenix lives here with me in Nashville. But when we go home to the farm in Kentucky, there's always other dogs. At Christmas, we had six dogs at our house. Oh, and, wow. and they eventually just go home to their homes. Phoenix, what are you doing? <laughs> um, they eventually just... Go go on, make their, go on their merry way, but they like to hang out at our house a lot. So, <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, I definitely like dogs. They're one of my uh, uh, favorite pets to have. I'm not a cat person, and uh, um, sorry to all the cat people out there. But uh, so you you mentioned that you're a uh, farm girl uh, from Kentucky. Tell us a little bit about that because uh, I'm not sure what generation you said, but it's been several generations in your family, correct? Yes, so I'm actually a fifth generation farm kid. Um, uh, my family's been in Kentucky for I don't know how long, and before that they were in Missouri and Northwest Tennessee. And uh, I grew up on we do livestock, we do row crop, we do all the all of that. And farming's always been a huge part of my life, and always will be. And I hope one day that I can have myself my own farm here in Nashville and continue that on and just move it a little further south. Okay. And I recently talked to Stephanie Nash. I don't know if you're familiar with that I artist. I love her. I've, we've written many times. She's such a sweet girl. I love her. Okay. And she's definitely a farmer too. I know she's doing the uh, dairy thing, but mm -hmm. uh, what type of farm do you guys have back home? We have a little bit of everything. Um, my cousin has cows. We've got some pigs. We've got some chickens. We've got mainly row crop is the main thing um, that my, my dad and his uncles do, but we've just got a little bit of everything, you know? <laughs> and, and I know the answer to this because uh, I lived around a lot of farmers in South Texas myself, but is it like the songs when they portray that it's like sun up to sunset and even more working? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 24-7. It's um, there's no such thing as a day off. There's no such thing as a vacation. I don't think my dad has left the farm for more than a day and a half in probably 15 years. Um, well, he did get to go to Italy about 10 years ago, and that's the last time he got to leave the farm. Um, so he, that's just our life. And, you know, it's always so funny because I get people, because here in Nashville, I do odd jobs. You know, I do construction, I do music, but I don't have like a full nine to five job. And then people are like, you don't know what it's like to work a job. And I want to be like, excuse me. I grew up on a farm, spent the first 17 years of my life, 24-7 doing some kind of work there's no such thing as a break there's no such thing as being able to stop and you know it's very rare you even get to sit down and watch a movie you know so there's it's, it's a lot of work and i um i'm very thankful for growing up with that work ethic and growing up with business-minded parents as well because that's been able to transfer over to my music 
and uh, been able to teach me that no matter what, you just keep on going and you work, work, work until you get to the, to the end goal. Yeah. So I, like I said, you know, being around a lot of farmers, I realized that they are the hardest uh, working people out there. And uh, not only that, but they're, they're some of the smartest people because, you know, I never realized how much uh, knowledge you need to know, not just on farming, but so many other things from business to environment and rules and regulations that oh, yeah. uh, it just kind of bewildered me. So uh, good for you for, for doing that. But to flip it back over to the music, I, I know you got something that's you just been promoting like crazy on social media. You got a song on its way out. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm very excited about this one. This one's a little different. Um, I've been joking around saying it's the closest thing to a love song I'm ever probably ever going to release. <laughs> but uh, y'all know I was a uh, during the pandemic, I started playing downtown Nashville sets and I had never really done those kind of, you know, the four hour cover gigs. But uh, I started doing those during the pandemic. And one day I was sitting there playing on a patio on uh, Broadway and I noticed about 30 guys walk by with mullets. And it made me so happy. I'm like, they are coming back. And <laughs> I realized then that I have an obsession with mullets and I love them so much. And so the next day, actually, I went and I was right with my friends, Megan and Greg. And I was like, guys, y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I just got to write a song about a mullet. I just got to do it. And they were like, we're on board. Let's go for it. And uh, they sat down and they wrote this crazy song about a mullet with me. And it's, become one of my favorite songs I've ever been a part of. And I hope the whole world loves it. I think a lot of people think I'm insane for it, but I love them. And this whole song is just about my love for mullets. Well, and and I'm definitely uh, enjoying some of this uh, mullet awareness that you're putting out there, the the little public service announcements. <laughs> that's, that's really great. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go check out uh, Dallas Remington social media. But the song is called Mullet. It's scheduled to be released Friday, uh, May 27th. And would you mind giving us uh, a sneak peek of the song here on Hank's Corner? Definitely. I'm so I'm honored to play it. This is my favorite song to play right now. So, uh, yeah, it goes a little like this. He blew through them doors like a hand grenade. I swear he's from another time, another place. Some creeping out of that dirty ball cap I was staring at. Staring right back. He walked right up and he said hello. I think I said I love you, but the hell if I know. There's something about them curls to get us girls all right up and naughty on a Friday. Now she's not a back and back to life. It's like I'm looking at a modern day Billy Ray. Can tell you waterfall, Mississippi mud flap. I don't care what you call it. Something about a mullet. Well, boy around here's got a rod and reel and likes to brag about his muddy four wheels. There's only one thing that'll get the job done, and it ain't a mohawk and it ain't a man bun. There's something about them curls that get us girls all riled up and running on a Friday. And 
And that was Dallas Remington singing her soon to be released song called Mullet. And that's definitely a fun song. I, I love hearing it. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of hate to admit it, but, uh, you know, back in the late eighties, early nineties, uh, I wasn't trying to go for a mullet. I was more into some of the hair bands at the time mm -hmm. and I tried to grow my hair long. And unfortunately it kind of did look like a mullet, but, uh, if you're saying, I'm fortunate about that, <laughs> but that's what I was going to say. If, if you think it's great, then, you know, then I can be proud of it again. And maybe this song will, uh, will do that. But, uh, so tell me, how did you make the move from Kentucky to Nashville? I know it's not that far away distance wise, mm -hmm. but, uh, you have a story where you started out very young and, and tell the uh, viewers about it. Yeah. So my hometown's only a little over two hours from Nashville. And I always make the joke that, you know, Nashville was our nearest mall. We would come to it, you know, to have like different stores you know and my parents you know when they first started married when they first got married they actually used to drive to nashville to eat it with red lobster because that was our nearest red lobster you know um so i grew up very close here and i started coming to nashville when i was 11 years old um to perform my first ever show was actually at the hard rock cafe here in nashville um and my first ever nashville show um and i you know i had always loved music and i had always you know as a little girl i was like i'm gonna be a singer when i grow up just like every little girl does and you know i always had that love for music though anyways so i'd always loved music and uh my brother actually who was my best friend ended up moving away when i was about nine and uh i was really i was homeschooled i didn't have a lot to do and uh besides soccer and schoolwork. and so my ma pa is what we call her my mama's mom was like well she's always really loved music why don't we get her into guitar lessons and some vocal lessons and so from there i started taking lessons at our local opry and i started getting to perform in their talent search on the weekends and uh, um next thing this things kept happening and i ended up winning um my week in the talent contest and when i did that they posted a video up of me on youtube singing uh the house that built me by miranda lambert and then i know you don't know me On the front steps are mine Up those stairs In that little back bedroom It's where I did my homework And I learned to play guitar And I bet you didn't know That under that line bow My favorite dog is buried in Touch this place so feeling this brokenness inside me my start healing out here it's like I'm someone else I thought that maybe I could find the myself if I could just come in I'll swear I'll leave wanting nothing but a memory from the house that a producer in Nashville saw it, invited me to start playing shows in Nashville and doing his TV show, and we have not slowed down since. So this this May is going to be 11 years. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I've definitely noticed that, that it's been a kind of a continuous thing for you, which is really good. Uh, but to back up a little bit, I know that uh, at one point you had to make a decision between soccer, which is what you were heavily competitive in, and, uh, you know, music. And I guess that was uh, around 13 when, when you did that. How easy was it for you to make that decision? And would it have been harder if you had done soccer, you know, let's say until your senior year of high school? Mm -hmm. Well... It's actually really funny. I'm a very stubborn person. I don't like being told what I can and can't do. And I had a soccer coach that told me I had to choose between music and soccer. So I said, I'm choosing music, buddy, and you can see me later. And I just left and never came back. <laughs> so <laughs> it was pretty easy. But, you know, I always knew that I would go towards music. But I had, I love soccer. My brother's a soccer player. And so that's how we, we bonded and that was the thing you know that was our thing together i mean my brother's traveled the entire world playing soccer he's done amazing things through it and so that was always our um our big bonding moment you know but you know he's a musician too so we have a lot of things we can bond over and um, but yeah that coach that coach told me i had to pick and i said well you shouldn't have said that bye <laughs> 
All right. So in a roundabout way, let's thank the coach for getting you into this music then. And, you know, and the reason why I ask is, you know, another Freedom Jammer that was out there was Peyton Howie and Mm -hmm. and Molly Lovett to some extent. But, you know, Peyton played softball all the way up through college when she made the decision to switch over to music. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, it's, you know, kind of kind of hard to make that decision if you're going to finish college because she was only in her first year mm-hmm. of, of playing or you're going to switch over to music so I guess it was a no-brainer for you like you said because <laughs> uh, of the coach so uh, I'm glad that uh, he he pushed you in that direction definitely and I always knew I was going to end up doing music full-time but I didn't see at the time why I couldn't do both and then when he told me I couldn't do both I was like okay I'm not going to yep. do both then all right. Well, hopefully uh, he sees this and, uh, uh, you know, like I said, you know, in a roundabout way, he's thanking. But uh, I do want to play a clip from Freedom Jam where you sung American Soil. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about that. Awesome. Uh, there's nothing we can say that we thank those men and women enough. But we tried to do that and we wrote this in the song. It's called American Soil. There's people over there waiting for a man. Praying and doing everything we can Working 24-7 till they can come home again And over here is the struggle just to make amends The fighting and dividing is between friends You can't even raise your voice and try to defend Wherever you stand Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. here with my special guest, Dallas Remington. And that was a uh, video from Freedom Jam last year, uh, back in August. And, uh, you know, I guess American soil means a lot to you. You know, you talked a little bit in that video about, you know, that how you came up with it, you know, sitting around uh, with your friend to come up with the idea. Uh, and I know that the cover art actually came from the flags there at Freedom Jam. But, you know, tell us, you know, what does it really mean to you as far as when you 
like write songs to give credit to other people? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just uh, as a songwriting in general, you know, we always write songs that can, even if it's, even if we're not meaning to, we always try to write songs that can cause someone some sort of healing, either through laughter or through reliving a moment or anything. And so with American Soul, you know, we wanted to show the world that there are people out there who realize that we couldn't do this without them. We couldn't do this without the men and women and the families and all the generations who have sacrificed everything, sacrificed their family members and just given their all to protect our country and keep us safe. And that's all we wanted to do with American Soul. We wanted them to see that, you know, there are people that are grateful and know that we cannot do anything. We do music, go to our jobs that, you know, we have to do. We couldn't drive down the road if it wasn't for the freedom um, that these men and women have given us. And I know that um, right around when we wrote that song was when, you know, there was things going on overseas where women weren't even allowed. They couldn't leave their houses without fear of being um, arrested or being shot. And, you know, we were just so thankful that we were in a country where it was free for two girls to sit in a room, talk about guys, talk about whatever we wanted to write whatever we wanted to talk about. And then we could write a song in the meantime. And we just really was heavy on our hearts that day to write a song showcasing how grateful and how thankful we are for that. And for that reason that we'll always be loyal to this great country we live in. Yeah. And I definitely appreciate you, you know, coming up with that idea, first of all, and then playing that freedom jam because there was a lot of great moments there. I mean, it was jam packed with great artists from start to finish mm -hmm. and there were so many good moments, but uh, you know, that one was one in particular that I really enjoyed. And, you know, if I had to be honest, you know, maybe there's a little bit of dirt in my eye that I had to wipe out, you know, to keep the tearing from coming out, but uh, it was definitely a great moment. And, you know, I, I appreciate that, you know, you think, and the people that are out there serving in the military you know we got family in my or people in my family that have been in the military and and currently are so we thank you for you know giving thanks for that but not even that but you also have another song called uncommon man where you also give credit because you know let's let's face it the military does you know need that credit and to be thanks but mm -hmm. there's also a lot of other people out there that also never get the recognition. And I think that's what Uncommon Man was about, right? Yes, definitely. So Uncommon Man um, was one, we actually wrote it. A lot of people think we wrote it right at the beginning of the pandemic for the essential employees, which is who we dedicated it to. But that was actually a song that I'd had for about three years. Um, so it's about five years old now. Um, but I wrote it with the same girl I wrote American Soul with. So we do really well sitting down writing those deep songs. Um, it's Courtney Bumbacher. But uh, Uncommon Man was actually Courtney's idea. And she wanted to write a song about her dad. She comes from a dairy farm in upstate New York. And uh, obviously, y'all know I come from a farm in western Kentucky. And she had pitched this idea out to so many different people. She's like, I want to write a song about my dad. And I just want it to be called Uncommon Man. And nobody, everybody's like, well, what do you mean by it? And she said it to me and I was like, oh my gosh, like it just hit me because there are so many people that don't realize the farm life, how you come up, how we're raised, how we work 24 seven, how we do all this stuff. And so, you know, I'm very grateful to have been raised in a family like that and raised by such a so strong, um, st such a strong father and mother and just an amazing family um, that's very farm based. But then, you know, we released it thanking all of the essential employees. It doesn't just have to be farmers. It was everybody. It was the policemen, the nurses, the cashiers at Walmart that still had to work through all of it. The, you know, one of, we did a lyric video um, and we had fans submit um, pictures of their uncommon man. And one of my favorites was actually my, one of my best friends from preschool, her mama was in it. And, you know, she's an uncommon woman because for 25 years, she's worked midnights at a chicken plant to be able to support her daughter. She's a single mom, but she's worked her butt off for 25 years to keep up their family and to be able to provide for her daughter. And that's just, those are the people that we were thinking with Uncommon Man. Those were the people that they need the recognition that they're never given. And so yeah. I'm very glad we were able to release Uncommon Man and, um shines the spotlight on the people who never get the spotlight 
Yeah. And like I said, I appreciate that. I mean, I love your other songs as well, but, uh, you know, these, you know, have a special meaning to that. And, uh, you know, thank you for putting those out, but tell me uh, about your writing style. Cause, uh, over the years, cause initially your initial song may have been a little bit too violent. I heard, and then now you're out here putting out some of these great songs. So tell me how you're, you know, you went from that a very initial song to where you are today and how your writing style has changed. Well, we've been releasing all kinds of different songs. I still like writing those, those, I guess what some people would call violent songs. You know, <laughs> Carrie Underwood does it. Miranda Lambert does it. There ain't no reason I can't do it. Um, but, I, you know, we still, you know, the other day I had a meeting with a publisher and I played him this new song that's not finished yet or I play part of it. But uh, it's another heartfelt, you know, deep thinking song that, you know, takes forever and you know we're on our fourth right on this song and i played it for the publisher and he's like you need to be writing more of those you need to be writing more of those and it's like okay yeah but it's taking us four rights and we go in and i write a song about slapping a man in 20 minutes like it's just <laughs> easier you know but you know sometimes you need those those goofy like fun songs um that are completely made up stories i've never slapped a man you know well but you know <laughs> you don't have to admit it here on this show hunting season was not a true story it was completely made up but you know we've made a we've released a whole bunch of songs and you know what we're doing this year is we're releasing a single every month and we're just trying to showcase where i'm at that month you know they're all over the place we've got some that have come out more punk rock we've got some that have come out super super country we've got the the crazy violent ones um, i don't i wouldn't say they're violent but some people would um and then we've got the heartfelt ones you know and it's just where i'm at as a writer and i've been in nashville writing um you know since i was 15 is when i really fell in love with songwriting and so i've written who knows how many hundreds of songs over the years and i finally just said they're they're just sitting here they're not getting heard let's just release them so that's why we're releasing so many different songs this year um but yeah so the process is different i mean those those fun ones that get really sassy those are sometimes just the the easiest songs to write because you just say crazy things we just get to ranting and then they end up in songs and but then the the uncommon mans and the american soul american soul was rare because that's one of the only heartfelt songs i've ever written in one afternoon most of the time you write on it for four or five days and you work at it and you work at it because you want it to be absolutely perfect and that one it was just a special day and that one came out perfect first try or what we would call perfect first try and um um so it's just it's a different experience every time you know my somebody's and i are writing a really heartfelt one right now and we were writing on it the other day and we said we're finishing it the next right and then we're only doing upbeat stupid <laughs> summer songs for the next three rides because we're not doing this again <laughs> but yeah. it just depends you know on what's in the room what the feelings are and what's going on that day yeah and I, and I definitely enjoy you putting out uh, all this music this year it, it definitely gives me uh, a material to use for my uh, new music Friday post so uh, keep them coming and uh, uh, we're definitely uh, enjoying them and and one of the songs that I recently had out on the post was uh, One Night Rodeo and uh, I was wondering can can you sing that for us here as well? Yeah I'll do that one for you Make sure I'm in the right key Okay, yeah. <laughs> I had another song in my head all of a sudden. Woo! I used to have a Red Bull addiction, and I haven't had a Red Bull in 40 days now. But for some reason, I'm hopped up like I'm on one right now. So I don't know. Like, I've had one. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyways, here is uh, One Night Radio. Well, that's stitching my about you. Not an avalanche, but you sure knew how to sell that smile. And down in New Orleans, any girl go crazy if they saw you in shine. Yeah, we just want, hey, darling, maybe in the palm of your hand, that you might spread that charm from town to town. But once you get a taste, you're gonna want to settle down Because I ain't no one stop Truck and train and leaving with the sun 
You think it will, but you won't get over me fast as a horses run. Ain't no first place behind closed gates. Throw me in and let me go. And he might be cowboy, but I ain't no one that rodeo. Well, that pasture's gonna look better the more time you spend with me. You'll be thinking about a front porch, fence post, and a diamond ring. Let me warn you now before it's too late. You're gonna have a hard time riding away, cause I ain't no one to stop. Truck and trailer living with the sun. Thank you will, but you won't get over me fast as a horse is a run. Ain't no first place behind closed gates. Throw me in and let me go. He might be a cowboy, but I ain't no one not a rodeo. No one not a rodeo. Cause I ain't no one stuff Truck and try and then leave it with sun You're gonna fall head all over here Fast as the horses are running Ain't no first place behind closed gates Throw me in and let me go And he might be a cowboy But I ain't no one about a rodeo No one I rodeo. I ain't no first place behind those gates. No one I rodeo. Well, that's just in my box, you. And I don't know And that was One Night Rodeo by Dallas Remington here on Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And uh, so I recently saw that you had gone to the Garth Brooks concert along with a lot of other people that I saw on social media that made me a little bit jealous. Uh, But uh, uh, tell me, obviously, you know, Garth is somebody that uh, you enjoy, but who are some of the uh, people that you you like listening to uh, and who's on your playlist and who influences you? Mm -hmm. So I have a a pretty wide range of influences. You know, obviously I grew up with very traditional countries. So Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, Patsy Cline, um, Dolly. I mean, who didn't grow up with Dolly, you know? Um, My mama, I make the joke, my mama was like an Alabama groupie. I don't know how many times she's seen Alabama in concert, but we love Alabama in our house. And so I grew up with all kinds of music and Garth. And then Toby Keith was one of my favorites growing up. I used to walk run around at three years old screaming I want to talk about me at the top of my lungs <laughs> um and uh, so those have been some pretty big influences on me and newer guys like I'm obsessed with Hardy like I love his writing style um and I just think he's a really cool person I always joke around and say I want to be his best friend that's all I want in life um but uh, you know there's a whole lot of influences when it comes to artists but then I'm such a I'm so deep in the songwriting community too, that I have so many influences um, through songwriting that, you know, I can name off a million people that y'all probably never heard of, but y'all know their songs. And the fact that I've been able to be in this community of songwriters for so long, and I've gotten to meet so many of my heroes has been an amazing, um, just an amazing thing for me. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And so, you know, it's a it's a wide range. And I also used to play metal. So I was in a metal band for a while. So there's some Metallica influence in there, too. <laughs> and you mentioned, you know, people we haven't heard of, whether they're a songwriter or they're getting ready to, uh, uh, you know, just become known that they're just not on that level yet. Who are some of the people, whether songwriters or singers uh, in Nashville that we should kind of be on the lookout for? Yeah, well, I mean, there's always different artists coming out but on the songwriter side i mean like 
one of my major influences was a songwriter and I didn't even know who was the writer of the song was, but one of the major um, influences to me, um, just pushing me to become a writer and become an artist was a song called The Family Man by Craig Campbell. And uh, I remember sitting in my, my daddy's work truck where the radio never worked ever and it just randomly came on one day and it played that song from beginning to end and i sat there in tears on the middle of the farm and i was like i want to be able to feel that i want to be able to make people feel that i want to write that and uh, fast forward i have now been very blessed to be become co-writers and really good friends with mr joel shoemake who's one of the writers on that song and it just um so he's one one of my major biggest influences and i didn't even realize he was the writer on the song we had become friends we had been writing together and we were playing at the bluebird one night and he started playing that song and i lost it i mean i was bawling like a baby i'm like that's what made me a songwriter um so that's one of my big influences as a songwriter is mr joel shoemake and mr chris wallen and cindy torres who has been a mentor to me since i was 15 years old on the songwriter side you know i could just go on forever and then you know, I'm very proud of all, all, all of my friends. You know, they say to find your group and grow with them. You know, I hang out with some amazingly talented songwriters who are getting ready to blow up. Um, Miss Megan Barker, I've known her forever. Um, my buddy Jacob Hackworth is about to blow up. And I'm really big fans of a new band that I'm hoping has some really big things coming out in the summer called After Midtown. So there's just a whole bunch of great talent coming up. And, you know, there's more people. There's a it used to be a hundred people moving to Nashville every day. I think it's more of a, probably closer to 500 people moving to Nashville every day. And, you know, most of those are moving here for music. A lot of those are moving here for music. And so there's just more talent to be discovered every day living in this awesome community. And I'm very grateful to be able to be exposed to that. And, you know, excited to get out there tonight and see if I meet some new people or who I hear tonight too. <laughs> And I always uh, love hearing about the uh, new and upcoming artists. But uh, aside from music, uh, well, I guess in addition to, not aside from, uh, you like cooking. So tell me a little bit about picking and cooking. Yeah, so we've actually been on a little bit of a hiatus from picking and cooking. And I don't think we've done one in a couple months. And I was just, we had a lot of stuff going on at home, but I absolutely love to cook. That's my, my, um, my stress reliever. If I get stressed out, I'll go in there and cook. I could see something on social media that ticks me off at midnight and I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to start cooking. That's what calms me down. I won't even eat it by the time it gets done. I just put it in the refrigerator and I'll eat it the next day, you know. Um, but I've just always loved to cook. And, you know, as as a little bitty kid, as long, along with music and soccer, I thought I would go into something culinary. You know, I had big dreams. I wanted to be a soccer playing singer who was also a chef, um, but um, I've always just loved to cook. And so picking and cooking was an awesome thing for us to do, especially during the pandemic, to keep me close with my fans and keep me close with my friends across the world where we were all locked in and couldn't do anything. You know, on any given night, we'd have people on there from Europe. We've had people on there um, from the Middle East. We've had people from all over the place tuning in um, just to talk about food and country music. So it's been um an awesome experience and hopefully we get to start it up real soon we're gonna we're in the middle of rebranding and doing some different things but we'll bring it back as soon as life gets a little less crazy <laughs> Yeah, definitely enjoyed watching some of that. And for those of you who have not seen Picking and Cooking, you know, go to Dallas Remington social media and, uh, you know, take a look at some of those past episodes. Uh, you can find her on Facebook and uh, her website is DallasRemington.com. And uh, but before we leave, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, play Princess, which, like I said at the beginning, was a huge hit for you i mean billboard top 40 congratulations on thank that you, thank and you. like i said there it is featured on cmt so uh if you haven't uh heard the song or haven't seen it then i don't know what rock you've been under but <laughs> uh uh, but yeah, we'll play that at the end. But before we go off, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, thank you for coming on and what should we expect for the remainder of this year from you? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. And, you know, like I said, we're releasing a single every month. So we're going to do a whole lot of different things. I think we're about to do something completely different for our July single. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, as soon as I decide what that completely different thing is, I'm like, we're going to switch it up. But I haven't decided what that's going to be yet. So we're going to get in the studio really quick and do something um, different with that one. And then we're getting back on the road some. We're super excited. So 
I've got dates currently booked in Tennessee, New York, Wyoming, um, just kind of all over the place. So hopefully we'll see y'all out on the road and, you know, just keep on looking for the new music. And if you haven't already, go listen to pre-save or download or whatever mullet and let's spread some mullet awareness. Oh, and, and besides that, uh, you do have, and I forgot to mention, a challenge out there about mullet, correct? Yes. So before we go off, tell us about that challenge. I do have a challenge. I don't even know if my mama has seen it yet, but I was telling <laughs> it to one of my friends the other day, and she goes, oh, Lord, no. Um, my challenge is if mullet gets 100,000 streams in the first two weeks, I will get a mullet. All right. So, so go out there and uh, let's start streaming this so uh, we can see what <laughs> Dallas looks like in a mullet. <laughs> it might come back and bite me in the rear end. <laughs> Hey, well, that'll be a good thing, right? The hair will grow back, and but uh, all that success will be worth it. But uh, Dallas Remington, once again, thank you for being a guest here on Hank's Corner. You're more than welcome to be a guest at any time. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to see you again. You don't think you got to cook. You don't think you got to you want to paint your nails, sit around reading magazines, <laughs> a selfie machine, a self-claimed royalty. Well, there's a difference between perception and reality. You ain't a princess, she just a dirt Double wide trailer with some late utility bills.